So now let's do some lighting. Lighting is a lot of fun. I'm going to teach you the three main fundamental lighting techniques there are in computer graphics. However, there are zillions of cool ways to get realistic lighting. I'm just going to teach you the bare bones basics. And if I ever get around eventually to writing a ray tracer and making a playlist on that, then I'll teach you much more complex lighting scenarios. But for now, we're just trying to do real time, get our lighting up. Something quick and dirty, but something that looks realistic and uh, and fun as well. The three core fundamental lighting techniques are ambient, diffuse, and specular. That's actually an order of difficulty. Implementing these, ambient is pretty straightforward to do. Diffuse, a little bit more complex. Specular, a little bit more complex than diffuse. But these all are not really complex. So I hope you don't. When I use that word complex, I hope it doesn't throw you off. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is ambient light. Ambient light is light that's simply there. Okay, it's not the direct result of a light bulb, though it could be a side effect of a light bulb. It's not a direct effect of a light bulb. For example, when I'm getting ready in the morning, I'll go in my bathroom and we have this one little light bulb. Well, there's several light bulbs in there, but one of the lights is sitting above my tub and I'll flip that light on. And all of a sudden, even though that light is hidden behind some walls in my bathroom, there's light now in my bedroom. It's called ambient light and it is a result of all the light bouncing around in the bathroom, eventually bouncing out of the bathroom and bouncing around in my bedroom. And it just kind of gives a little bit of light, enough light in there for me to get ready. And that is what we call ambient light. Ambient light is simply uh, the result of light that's just there. It's ambient. In fact, when I was building my house, one of the rooms, they didn't put a light bulb on the ceiling. They said, hey, you can pay for an upgrade. We'll put a mount there where you can just go buy a light and put it there. But we won't put it there anyway because we're trying to create some ambiance. Now, ambiance sounds like ambient. I guess that's what they're going for, is we want some ambiance in that room. I thought it was a pain, because I got this room that's not well lit. And uh, anyway, I went and got a light bulb and put it there. Uh, I digress. Let's do ambient light. It's pretty straightforward. We just add some light to the scene. And we needed to do that via a shader. I believe we have our vertex shader code here. And we can use the vertex color in our lighting. Uh, I guess we will. But for now, let's just let's add a uniform here. Uniform Vec3 Ambient Light. Right, and then down here, instead of saying the color gets vertex color, I'm going to say the vertex color times the amount of ambient light. Now what's cool in shaders is we're multiplying a vector here times a vector. And this multiplication is not a dot product, it's not a cross product. Instead, what this does is multiply the components of the vertex color with the ambient light, and that'll be the result there. For example, if my vertex color is all red, uh, half green, and a little bit of blue, okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and I times that with half red, uh, half green, and let's do, I don't know, on 0.9 of blue. Then the result, this times this, is just be a component-wise multiplication, which is nice. It works really well for doing colors. So 1 times 0.5, we'll get 0.5 of red. 0.5 times 0.5, we'll get 0.25 of green. And then 0.1 times 0.9, we'll get 0.09 of blue. So hopefully you see how that works. It's not a dot. It's not a cross. It's simply component-wise multiplication, which works well for lighting. So we're going to add this uniform called ambient light. That's the amount of light that will be in the room. Going back to our GL window here in Paint GL, we need to get that uniform location and, and set that uniform value. In fact, we could do it once. We could do it after we compile the program, but... I think for now we'll just do it in here. GL, get uniform location. That's the uniform called ambient light. Ambient light. And of course, I need to pass the program ID first. Program ID. So give me the ambient uniform. And where do we do our other uniforms? Our model view projection. Oh, we did that in the initialized GL where we should have done it. Oh well. Uh, full transform 
GL in. Okay. Control minus minus get back to where we're at. GL int. Ambient light uniform location. Gets give me that uniform location. And then let's do GLM VEC3. I believe we had the using for that, didn't we? Yep. VEC3 ambient light. And let's say the amount of ambient light we have in a room is 0.1 across the board. 0.1 blue. Point, or what? This is red, sorry. 0.1 of red. 0.1 of green. And 0.1 of blue. GL uniform 3 float vector. Because it's a vec 3. And we're passing in 3's here. It's ambient light uniform location. It's going to be one of them. The address of ambient light sub 0. And there we go. That's pretty much all there is to it. We just add a little bit of ambient light to the scene. Then in my shader, I just say, hey, take the color of this vertex, multiply it against the amount of ambient light. So what's going to happen, instead of getting our full vertex color, we're only going to get part of our vertex color, a partial part of our vertex color. Let's control F5, build this, run this, and look at the result. You can see, yeah, we, we, we have a little bit of ambient light, just a little bit of light to the scene. And it's it's whitish or gray, if you would. All the vertices have the exact same amount of color. I hope you're turned up to high definition so you could see that. Let me uh, bump up the reds. Say for whatever reason we have a very reddish ambient light. I'll increase the amount of red ambient light that's in the scene. You can see, oh, a nice, strong ambiance there. That's what my sh builder should have done. Is We're trying to create some ambiance. Oh, I could have punched them when they did that. Uh, let's add some green. I'm, you can play with these numbers all you want. I encourage you to play with these numbers. But now that's kind of ugly. Looks like I'm stuck in some aquarium that hasn't been cleaned for a while. But There you go. That's ambient light. It's not perfect ambient light though. That's the problem with this ambient light model is, is if this was true ambient light then different parts of the scene would be darker. For example, let me, let me just bump this up. 0.3 is a lot of ambient light. That's probably too much. But I want to bump this up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And just in case the recording software is not not as clean as I'd like it to be. Here is the teapot. And everything in here has the same amount of ambient light. But really, in a true ambient light scene, it would be darker in here where the teapot meets the plane. Okay, if, you look, if you're sitting in a room and there's ambient light, or even in the room you're in right now, look up at the corner of the room and there's ambient light lighting that corner of the room maybe have a little bit of direct lighting too from some light bulbs or something it works better if the room you're in is lit by fluorescent light bulbs but it's darker in the corners of the room simply because not as much ambient light can hit this point but we're not doing ray tracing if we were doing some ray tracing we could get some more realistic lighting but we're not we're doing real-time lighting we need it to be fast and so this lighting model will have to do but there you go that's ambient light Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. In fact, with ambient light, we can even ditch the vertex colors. Let's go down here and just say, hey, the color is the amount of ambient light that's in the room. And now we get this kind of grayish look, which doesn't look that good until we add the rest of the lighting in here. So I'll, I'll do that in the next videos.